नमस्कार वेलकम टू प्रकाश ऑन बेसिक्स लास्ट टाइम वी सॉ हाउ फूड स्टोर्स एनर्जी वी नाउ सी हाउ आर बॉडी यूजेस दिस एनर्जी दैट इज स्टोर्ड इन फूड वी विल बी टॉकिंग ऑफ द फर्स्ट स्टेप रिलेटेड टू इट टूडे द कॉम्पोनेंट्स ऑफ ऑल फूड दैट वी ईट आर आइडर carbohydrates proteins fats minerals or vitamins this is something that all of us have heard in school um, in the process of making more complex molecules energy has been stored in all those molecules that's what we talked of last time so we need to break down this food and thus release all that energy for our own utilization there are a few steps involved in this the first is digestion of food the second is to transport the energy required in the form of these food materials to different body parts and release the energy at that point there is of course a third part um, which is to dump all the unutilized material as waste products we'll come to that sometime later depending upon the type of food and the way we eat it we utilize uh, anywhere between 10% to 90% of the total intake of food that we have please remember that our originally our body is designed to eat raw food but we humans have modified our habits cooking taking out juices using concentrates to the extent of uh, giving intravenous fluids all these are uh, later adaptations in the last 10 15000 years let's come with start uh, the beginning which is digestion digestion is converting all that insoluble food that we've obtained from various sources into small water soluble molecules these molecules are then absorbed in the blood for this both physical and chemical processes are involved we need to understand all of these please understand that the more the surface area the better is the chemical reaction so the first step is to break down food into small bits as small as possible we call this process as mastication that takes place in our mouth we have incisors to break material break uh, food particles we have canines to tear off flesh or other materials we have molars to grind all this food and that digestion process actually begins in our mouth itself when saliva starts getting mixed with all these broken down particles it has a compound called amylase that begins breaking down starch and last time i told you that starch are polysaccharides sugars but pretty complicated so there is no sweetness left in them and we need to break it down and what i am going to do is use water for it and that process is known as hydrolysis breaking down with the help of water and then when we chew food um, it gets lubricated it mixes breaks down and can be swallowed very easily for this of course the help is with our tongue realize one more thing that we must masticate or bite down on food and give it enough time so that starch can start its breakdown process and then and then only would carbohydrates be easily digested and then here somewhere we have a food pipe and the pipe through which we breathe the wind pipe and there is a flap it's known as the esophagus 
that's the valve that controls food and wind windpipe openings we can do only one of these two at a time i can't eat and swallow at the same time i can't eat and talk at the same time because one is associated with the air that flows out and the second with what is going in and how does food go down in you can't just put it in a box and send it down no there's a pipe and all around it are muscles and these muscles undergo a wave mechanism so it gets compressed and compressed and compressed and compressed and expands and the food is gradually pushed downwards this process is known as peristalsis and when by mistake somehow we ingest or take in some material that's not good enough for our body or we rather is harmful for our body then the process reverses itself and all that food is thrown up and that is known as anti peristalsis so using peristalsis the food goes down and as it goes into the stomach at various points just prior to the stomach and around it different secretions get added to the food and we know some of them the first obviously is the bile and the second is the gastric fluid bile is that yellowish green fluid that is within us sent down by the liver how much um for a normal human being um it's around 400 to 800 cc it's nearly a little less than 3/4 of a liter per day that this secretion is given and sent into the stomach and what does it do it helps to digest lipids lipids are all those fats and fatty acids that are there in our food but the final absorption process and breakdown process begins in the small intestine which is a little later and the second major constituent that is added is the gastric acid and this is the one that helps in protein digestion about a liter and a half of it is added to our food throughout the day it contains pepsin which helps in digestion of protein it also has hydrochloric acid if you know of acids and hcl a little bit of it on your hand and it starts scratch, scratching and itching and starts burning the skin so inside our stomach and inside the intestine there is an additional lining of mucus that protects this acid from attacking our body remember if you have a very upset uh, stomach and you start throwing out things your throat and all that area starts burning that's because of the acid content that is there which has remained undigested and this small intestine is where all this down trickles down that's around 2 and 1/2 meters it's around 10 feet or 11 feet and it's a long track along which these carbohydrates and lipids and proteins and other stuff starts getting absorbed absorbed into blood so you, does blood flow into our intestine not really what you have is one side where is there is blood and other side which is the inner pipe which is the intestine but if i have only so much of surface area i just mentioned some time back the chemical reactions would take a long time not only that the absorption of food would also take a long time so what happens is instead of having a flat surface like this you have a lot of finger like structures that come out these are known as villi and what happens is then the surface area starts increasing the instant the surface area increases the absorption of food would be better um to understand this uh, suppose we have something like this this is the surface right and this is the amount of surface area that's available but what is actually there in the intestines is something like this so what you have is all these villi that are there and each one has an extra surface area connected behind and there are blood flow tubes going all the way through up to the surface so the blood then can interact by another process more complicated in physics which is known as osmosis and because of that 
फूड नो द ब्रोकन डाउन फूड नो द मॉलिक्यूल्स दैट कॉन्स्टिट्यूट द ब्रोकन डाउन मटीरियल एंड द मोस्ट डॉमिनेंट ऑफ इट इज द शुगर्स और ग्लूकोज टू द ग्रेटेस्ट एक्सटेंट दैट स्टार्ट गेटिंग एब्सॉर्ब सो वॉट हैपन्स इज दिस इज द पाइप and the food is getting ingested and everywhere inside it is getting absorbed and transported to the blood which is on the other side so naturally immediately after food after a few minutes the blood flow to the stomach increases and then all the muscles and other parts of the body starts relaxing a little bit and since the blood flow to the stomach has increased you tend to get drowsy after good meal and many children and many people too tend to fall asleep why because their body wants to rest while the blood is interacting with the food that is being gradually digested into the body so that's how the absorption process takes place and what gets added on the materials that i took talked of gastric juices and the bile and the other materials these are all known as enzymes and they are also called they are in chemistry they are act like catalysts catalysts are helping hands which help the reaction to take place faster but don't actually take part in the reaction itself so they remain independent they are just helpers so naturally the body can reuse them and re get reabsorb them and break them down if required and so forth so what happens is they help to break down sucrose proteins amino acids all these we start getting absorbed with the help of water and the molecules are a bit complex and a bigger chain like lipids and fats you start getting more thirsty because what you need is to do that job of hydrolysis and for that you need water and that's the water that is being used and that's why you start getting thirsty when food comes in so heavy oily foods would need that much more amount of water to break down realize that major absorption of all the food that we talk of takes place in the small intestine and then we also know that there is a large intestine beyond so as the remaining material starts going there it's quite fluid and uh, flowing out into the large intestine so all that extra amount of water is not to be wasted out so the body drags that material out that water out again and starts compacting all that matter that is no longer being digested or taken into the blood stream this is also one more requirement all our tracts inside have a number of different bacteria which are very helpful for us and the working also needs energy so all that energy for the bacteria and other stuff starts getting absorbed by the body in this large intestine finally what cannot be absorbed has to be thrown out we'll come to that later on so what happens then as i was talking protein digestion takes place in the stomach fats get adjusted suitably and absorbed in the small intestine the proteins too actually get absorbed again in the intestine so do the carbohydrates in the whole process i have been talking of breaking down things but there is one material that does not break down but is absorbed as it is we must know of it and that's vitamin b12 the reason is the instant you break down vitamin b12 you can't remake it again inside it has to be used and absorbed as it is so b12 is the only thing that gets through directly into the blood stream on the other side of the villi that i talked of some time back and that's how all the important constituents the major part of it is glucose that gets into our blood stream the process for the transfer without the blood actually coming into contact with the food particles is through their small thin walls 
which involves a process more related to physics and chemistry at a higher level known as osmosis in fact the trees and plants and others take in water and other material also oxygen later on as we will be talking about by this process which is osmosis so that's how food gets broken down into its nutrients which get absorbed into the blood and then they are transported to the various regions of the body so we have covered one step the food has been suitably broken down and into the blood we still haven't got energy out of it how that energy is obtained next time if you have liked whatever i have said please like and subscribe to this channel tell your friends about it let them also know how food is digested and how we must keep chewing more and more so that the process starts off in our mouth itself and then facilitate it by chewing down on the food as much as possible ensuring that maximum absorption takes place till we meet next time namaskar <laughs>